Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to making 3D games and Game Maker run fast. Last time, we undertook the rather uh, Herculean task of combining every single one of these 2500 trees into a single vertex buffer. And the effect that this has is that we can now draw every single one of these 2500 trees in a single shot, instead of having to iterate over them all in, um, in GML and having to draw them all individually, which is comparatively slow. And it had a nice effect on our FPS reel that we're observing. Uh, somewhat less so on the, on the actual frames per second, um, especially on some uh, devices with weaker uh, graphics hardware, such as the Raspberry Pi. But it's, uh, it's definitely a step in the right direction, and it's definitely a thing that can speed up your game. And today we're going to be taking that a step further. So, uh, I'm going to be starting with this. This is going to be the, uh, the project with the combined 2500 trees into a single vertex buffer that I did in the last video. And... Game Maker is, is taking a minute to close games now. There was a, uh, there was a minor update, I want to say yesterday morning, to, uh, to runtime version 2.3.2.423, and for whatever reason, it's got some, uh, it's got some garbage collector issues that, uh, that manifest themselves when you do things such as trying to close the game. So, real quick, uh, this is, this is what the code looks like. This is the same as it was in the last video that I posted. For the uninitiated, this is one of a multi-part series on 3D optimization and Game Maker, and, of course, I do recommend going and watching all the other videos in the series as well because these things tend to not work in isolation. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what the project looks like now, currently. And this is, the, uh, this is the big old for loop that combines every single vertex in every single tree into a single vertex buffer. Let's see, so what we're going to be talking about today is going to be considerably less code. How many lines of code is this? This is about 25 lines of code, 30 lines of code. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is considerably less than that. And it is going to be a single function call called vertex freeze. And this is a function, it takes one argument, it takes a vertex buffer. The vertex buffer has to be completed, so you have to have already called vertex end on it. Uh, this is vertex freeze, this will freeze the vertex buffer, and this, in theory, will make it faster to draw. And if I were to run the game, you would see that, uh, indeed, that's what happens. Our FPS reel has gone up even further from, uh, from about 1200 to about 37, 3800. Um, again, this goes back to what I said in the introductory video when I went over what FPS real is and how it works and the value that it reports. Uh, high values of FPS real are deceptively meaningless because this, uh, about a thousand FPS real, that would mean that your game is taking uh, a single millisecond to update and render every frame, and a value of 4000 FPS real means your game is taking a quarter of a millisecond to update and render every frame. And that sounds like a lot, but it is considerably less than a, um, than, a, than, for example, a bump of uh, 200 to 1000 FPS real, which would be a, uh, a decrease of 5 milliseconds per frame to 1 millisecond per frame. So it looks like we got a lot of uh, a mileage out of that vertex freeze line of code there, but before you get too excited, remember how that works out mathematically. So let's talk about what this actually does. So the vertex freeze function freezes the vertex buffer, and I realize that's one of the less useful things that I've ever said, but uh, freezing a vertex buffer has a couple implications. One, and the one that we mostly care about now when we're talking about optimization in 3D games, is that it is much faster to draw a frozen vertex buffer than it is to draw a non-frozen vertex buffer. Uh, in some cases, dramatically so, as we've seen here. If I were to, uh, let's, let me comment this out and run it into bug mode so that we can see some actual times. But I want to say that the uh, the vertex freeze took about two-thirds of, of an entire millisecond. Yes, firewall warning, I know. Um, about two thirds of an entire millisecond off of the, uh, the time that it takes to submit that one individual vertex buffer. Uh, let me start profiling. Let me let it run for a couple seconds. Just to, uh, <clears throat> just to let the values average out a little bit and stop. So vertex submit. Okay. This function is being called three times. One for the trees, one for the ground and one for the player. But in total, it's taking about half of a millisecond to call vertex submit um, three times. And if I were to stop this and uh, uncomment this line and run the game into bug mode again, after the game properly stops, uh, we will be... We... Game maker? Game maker. Uh, we will be able to see uh, after 
calling vertex freeze on the big vertex buffer exactly how long it's going to take instead. Um, let's see. Let me start profiling again. And where is vertex submit? Vertex submit. Okay. So it's taking maybe not two thirds of a millisecond off, but it's taking about um, half a millisecond off of the time that it takes to do this. You can see that this has dramatically been reduced. So it's about um, five microseconds down from 500 microseconds. So phone. All right, where were we? So I am not 100% sure what this means on a technical level, but from the tests that I've done and from what I've been able to um, discern from, uh, from, from those tests and from asking people is that freezing a vertex buffer stashes it in video memory rather than just allowing the vertex buffer to live in random access memory where most of the stuff in your game lives. And that means when you vertex submit it, you don't have to spend time transferring that vertex data from random access memory to your GPU. And instead, you can just um, you can just tell the GPU to draw the vertex buffer that's already in its its video memory. This general practice of caching stuff and trying to minimize the number of times that you have to send data between different parts of hardware in your computer is, um, in general, not just in 3D and not just in games, an optimization strategy that comes up a lot in computers. So the fewer times you have to write something to the disk, or the fewer times you have to do something like communicate over a network. And if you like really low level optimization, there's also the matter of uh, keeping as much stuff as possible in the CPU's cache rather than having to access the random access memory. But uh, we won't be talking about that in a Game Maker video. Anyway, if you were to comment this out, you would see that what I said uh, in the previous video about the computer doesn't really care about drawing 10 vertices versus 100 vertices versus 1000 vertices kind of isn't true and it kind of doesn't scale well. Um, because if I were to just run the game as it is without a frozen vertex buffer, um, you would see that we're going to be pulling what about 1200 FPS real is what it sort of uh, what it sort of evened out at. Uh, meanwhile, if I were to go and increase this number to something like, let's say, 5,000, let's double the tree count, um, with uh, twice as many vertices that we're going to be trying to work with, we will see that the uh, the number is going to actually be a little bit lower. It's going to be out about, um, looks like it's looks like it's going to even out at about 800 or so, which is still much much better than what we were doing before when we were drawing all of these individually, but it's still not perfect. Uh, meanwhile. If I were to comment out vertex freeze, and if I were to go back to, where's my keyboard? If I were to go back to drawing 2,500 trees, we would see that we were pulling about 4,000 FPS real, um, 3,000 3, and change, maybe. And if I were to comment that out, let's go with 3,500 or so. If I were to, I'm sorry, if I were to double this value, to 5,000, we would see that we are still going to be more or less doing that, Game Maker. We are still going to be more or less uh, pulling the same amount of, of FPS real, and it won't be uh, it won't be affected by um, the amount of stuff that we're trying to draw in the same way. So it's still 3,500 plus uh, 40, 40, 4,000 is what I think it was. The phone, uh, what it was the first time I uh, I did this earlier in the video. Okay. That's Vertex Freeze. Um, there is also the matter, of course, as I am doing this in almost every video, of what this means for the Raspberry Pi. So if I were to... Um, if I were to comment this out, if I were to set the target uh, for, for building the game to the Raspberry Pi, if I were to wake up my Raspberry Pi and try to record its screen, uh, we are going to... We are going to see how it's performing here. Um, just as a... Uh, a quick refresher of what happened in the last video. Combining every single tree into a single vertex buffer and drawing the um, drawing the vertex buffer in one shot uh, increased the FPS real dramatically, but it didn't really increase the observed frame rate because the Raspberry Pi's GPU is not that strong, uh, particularly compared to something like a desktop computer. And all that really did was shift the workload from the CPU to the GPU on the Raspberry Pi, and we really didn't see a significant boost in, in frames per second. Um, because of the uh, the Raspberry Pi's much weaker GPU and much lower fill rate than uh, than my desktop computer. Okay, this is more or less what it was yesterday. We have about 120 FPS real uh, that we're observing, and about 25, uh, 25 maybe low 20s actual frames per second that we're observing. Again, all combining the tree objects did really is it shifted the the workload from the CPU to the GPU, and now the uh, the bottleneck is the GPU rather than the CPU, and the uh, the, the number of frames per second that we're pushing. Uh, hasn't really changed overall. 
And if I were to stop this, and if I were to uh, uncomment the vertex freeze line, and if I were to run the game again, as soon as Game Maker actually gets its act together and allows me to informally closes the game and allows me to restart it, uh, we are going to see that more or less the same thing is happening. And that is going to be that the, uh, the frames per second doesn't really change in a meaningful way, but the FPS real, which in, in cases like this is ironically probably less real of an FPS measure than what we're actually seeing, we're still going to be seeing low 20s uh, FPS that we're actually observing, but the FPS real that's being reported has more or less almost tripled. It's gone up by about two and a half times from 120-ish to, uh, to 340-ish. And again, this means a reduced workload for the CPU side of the game on the Raspberry Pi. It means your game has to spend less time transferring data to the graphics card. But again, in this case, on the Raspberry Pi with a weaker GPU. I finally found some statistics on the graphics unit in this thing uh, last night, by the way. It's a uh, Broadcom Video Core 6 with uh, all of 12 computation units, and uh, they're clocked at about half a gigahertz each. Anyway, the bottleneck here is the same as it was before, and uh, Vertex Freeze has not really helped. Okay, let's close that and get Ed out of the way. So, some other implications that freezing a Vertex Buffer has. So, ordinarily, when you have a regular Vertex Buffer that's unfrozen, uh, you can, after you say Vertex End, if you wanted to, you could say Vertex Begin. Again. And uh, you could say Vertex End. After you do after you do vertex begin, and you could uh, you could you could start putting more data into the vertex buffer after you end it. If you say vertex begin again, and this will effectively erase anything that's already inside it and just rewrite it from scratch. And that's perfectly fine if you have a vertex buffer that you want to manipulate constantly. Uh, you can uh, you can do that. You can rewrite it using vertex begin and and all that. And to just show that this is working, let me uh, let me take. Let me take this code here. Let me take part of the combined code again, and uh, let me just let me just add the first tree to the vertex buffer, and um, without without going through the whole thing. So this is gonna this is gonna fill the combined vertex buffer, and then we're gonna erase it and start over. And you're perfectly allowed to do that um, using a regular vertex buffer. As you can see, we have our one single lonely tree all the way off of the distance over here, and the rest of the forest is just gone. I uh, I take it this is the first one that spawns in that big ol' randomly generated loop. But, if you were to do this with a frozen vertex buffer, it would not work. A uh, game maker would complain, your game would crash, and you would not be allowed to do this. Uh, if you have a frozen vertex buffer, you are not allowed to erase it and restart it. Otherwise, you will get an error that looks something like this. And if you absolutely have to, if you do want to recreate a frozen vertex buffer, uh, you have no other choice other than to vertex delete D. Having a lot of, uh, off by one errors on, on where my hands are on my keyboard today. You will have to delete the vertex buffer and you will have to start it over with a vertex create buffer like this. And is this a, uh, okay. No error there. The, uh, the syntax checker just as usual took a moment to, uh, to catch up to itself. So if you delete the vertex buffer and restart it, you'll be fine. Uh, of course, you can also do this to a regular non-frozen vertex buffer, although it's marginally faster to just call vertex begin again. Um, again, the one single lonely tree is off in the distance over here. This is admittedly something that you'll probably not be doing terribly often, so in general it's probably not that big of a deal to just freeze all your vertex buffers and stash them away in video memory and let your computer store them for later uh, for somewhat faster drawing. Uh, the other thing that you cannot do with a frozen vertex buffer is something that I am actually already doing now. Uh, in this loop here when I'm combining all the trees, and that is buffer create from vertex buffer. So if I were to, uh, I, I can do vertex, I can convert a vertex buffer to a regular buffer, as we've already seen. Uh, that was kind of what, um, that's kind of what the uh, last video on combining uh, meshes into a single vertex buffer just depended on in, in its entirety, is uh, buffer create from vertex buffer. But if I were to do that, buffer create from vertex buffer. If I were to use that or the like special version of that function, which uh, takes a few extra arguments to a frozen vertex buffer, and I can call it something like I don't even have to store it in a variable. I just need to call the function and it'll crash. But just for the sake of uh, for the sake of argument, 
we can call it big data buffer or something like that. If I were to run the game now, and if I were to try and, oh, I, uh, I need a couple more arguments. The type is gonna be, I'm just gonna go with fixed and the alignment is gonna be one. We are gonna see that this is gonna crash the game too. So we can take a moment to actually run the first loop the, the first time. And now we have another similar error message to the last one, which says buffer create from vertex buffer can't create a buffer from a, from a frozen vertex buffer. Fairly self-explanatory. And again, my, uh, my strong suspicion is that this data all lives in NVIDIA memory now, and GameMaker doesn't really have a, have a way to get it back, or I suppose maybe it doesn't have an efficient way to get it back, and it doesn't want to allow you to do that. Hey. So you cannot convert a frozen vertex buffer to a regular buffer. And again, if I were to comment this out, we would see that we're allowed, just as we were, were before. All right. No problems here, good sir. So that's frozen vertex buffers. That's uh, that's most of the implications that this has. I um, I can't think of off the top of my head anything other, any other major things that freezing a vertex buffer means. Um, it can be very good for performance if you wanted to instead of doing this. Um, if you wanted to freeze the the small ones, let me just comment out all of this, all of the frozen, all of the combined vertex buffer stuff. Let me comment out this line where it's drawn and uncomment the line where the trees are drawn individually. Um, let me just see what we're, uh, how we're going to perform. I want to say it's a uh, 150 FPS real and 60 frames per second steady. Uh, this, the, uh, the CPU and game maker is having to do a lot more work now. And in general, that's going to mean your game is going to run slower. And if I were to vertex freeze every single one of, um, VB underscore tree. Vertex tree. That's a new, uh, that's a new typo. I don't believe this would have as much of an effect on performance as freezing a large vertex buffer because most of the, uh, most of the, most of the time that is being spent and arguably wasted in this game right now is things such as vertex submit itself and, um, setting the matrices and that sort of thing. And as we see, the FPS reel has gone up a little bit. It's gone up from about 140, 150 to about 180, but it's nowhere near as dramatic of an improvement as, um, as it was. Uh, on the big one. So that's uh, that's something to keep in mind. This is something that definitely tends to have more of a dramatic effect uh, when you're dealing with large vertex buffers than small ones. Hey. All right. I am going to end it off. I am going to re-comment the stuff that was commented earlier and uh, leave it at this when I commit these changes for the, uh, the GitHub. Uh, one line of code to freeze the vertex buffer. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games and doing things that you really shouldn't be doing in Game Maker. I, um, I try to post about two of these videos a week. Usually that means one tutorial tutorial and one let's make a tower defense game, but these this week and possibly next week might be a little bit weird depending on how much time I have. Regardless, that's the plan. If you want the code for this, uh, the, the entire project and some other optimization projects are can be found in a GitHub repository in the video description. Uh, so if you want to toy around with different things that you can do to make your games run faster, definitely check those out. Uh, this particular project was only actually one line of code, but most of them are a little bit more than that. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, uh, feel free to check out the links to that Patreon page that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found that interesting. Um, I am definitely curious if any of you are having trouble optimizing your own 3D games, how much of an improvement these different... Uh, strategies that I've been talking about uh, have have affected things. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.